I just want you to read this case study, and it's a very accurate case study. There's more detail to it. Um, so Yanya, a, a physiotherapist in Iraq, and her three children were forced to leave their homeland after her husband was killed. She herself was threatened and she feared for her life and the life of her children. She escaped across the border to a neighbouring country where she spent the next seven years in a detention centre or refugee camp um, before her, her, her and her children resettled in Australia. Um, so arrival in Australia and, and other countries is usually a very long road. Seven years is, um, you know, it's quite small compared to many refugees who have lived in camps for 10, 15, 20. I knew a, a young girl who was 24, I think, and she was born in a refugee camp and um, arrived in Australia a couple of years before I met her. Um, so they've already gone through one culture shock, one, one trying to settle in, a, in one country and then they're trying to resettle in another country. And without speaking out of term or, or, or um, uh, assuming, by the time they get to their um, settlement country, they're probably over it. They're probably, a lot of them wonder, should we have even, even ever left? It's just so draining and, and, and emotionally consuming. Um, and so by the time they come and settle in Australia, as a, particularly as a refugee, um, they are just grateful that they don't have to continue on. So what do you think is going through Yana's mind as her plane descends into Australia, into Sydney? How is she feeling about her future? Does she know that this is the last place? She probably doesn't. Is there some, well, I, I don't know what Sydney is. What are the people like? The, she's coming in an aeroplane, she's seeing the lights. Who do I trust? Who do I not trust? You know, many of these countries that people flee from, the government is someone that you don't trust. The police is someone that you don't trust, generally speaking. Um, so we're asking them to live a completely different life and view things in a very different way to, to how they're used to and asking them to trust. Trust the person who they're speaking to who they've never met. So what do you think, what else do you think she's thinking? She'll be concerned about the welfare of her children, where they're going to live, where am I going to get some food, how do I get around? How do I survive? How Who's going to help me? Yep. How do I live? What if my child is sick? Pardon? Where do I live? Where do I live? Mm -hmm. Luckily, um, Australian government has and has been funding settlement programs for many years. And our settlement program is a very successful settlement program. Um, but regardless of what support there is there, there is that fear of what am I going to do for my family? You know, she's a physiotherapist, she's well educated. Will she ever get a job as a physiotherapist? Probably not. Will her language skills be high enough, her English language skills, will they ever be high enough to get a job that can sustain her and her children? Don't know. Those are the thoughts amongst many others.